Welcome to the AFR Saints channel, where we provide you daily content on your favorite team, the New Orleans Saints. Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to leave your comments below and smash that like button. Who that? Week 7 of the NFL season kicks off Thursday night football. Saints Jags from the Dome. Tomorrow night, Frank Frangie will be there. A friend from 1010XL in Jacksonville. Also the radio voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars. It's been 11 days in London. Frank, uh, did you pick up an accent? Did you get any good food? A few pints? How was it, man? The main thing, Matt, is I've been going to bed at 7 o'clock every night since then. <laughs> That's the thing. Got to shake the... We had a great time over there. Went to Ireland for a few days and did some things we hadn't done. And Hey, look, one, two games over there. That's the yeah. big thing, too. We had a great time, but it's good to be back on American soil. You know, I'm glad you brought up the the Jags winning two games because I, I you know, I'm a, I'm big Frank on not only who you play but when and where you play them. And for Jacksonville to be in London for two weeks and then to come back and play Indy last week, I really thought that was a spot where where it it favored Indy, and that game wasn't even close. So how has this team sort of navigated the whole London trip and assimilating back into the States and all the different circumstances surrounding that. Matt, he's done a really good job. He being Doug Peterson, he, he's done a really good job of keeping the thing the thing. Yeah, I know everybody talks about culture. That's the most popular word in sports these days, and I get it. But he really has built that, and he's eliminated distractions. You're right. It was, it was an odd trip. No one's ever done it before. We Even as broadcasters, we had not done this before. And so they went to one location and practiced, and then he played the Falcons. Then they had to move to another location and practice there. And so they changed hotels and play, played the Bills and played very well in that game. Then they had to come back and get ready for the, the Colts, and now a short week to play the Saints on the road. It was a weird schedule. He's done a really good job of eliminating distractions. Now, part of that, too, is he's got the right team. In 2017, we had a pretty good team here, almost got to the Super Bowl. But, but Matt, the Colts were not right. It was a dysfunctional group. It just was. And this is a good group, man. This is a group that they trust each other. They trust him. And I think that's how they've been able to navigate it because they're playing really well. Um, obviously, the big – let me not bury the lead, Frank. Obviously, the, the biggest story is uh, is Trevor Lawrence's knee. What, what, what can you tell us? I don't think – I think he, I think he's going to try and play. That's what I'll tell you. We was with him yesterday. Uh, he wants to play in the game. I, he's uh, The good thing is, if you remember after the game, Matt, if you're watching after the game, he came out. Game ends, he walks out to the field, and he talks to Gardner Minshew, and he talks to the Colts people, and then he, then he did his media after. I think if you're hurt badly, you don't do that, right? You don't, you don't, the guys that get hurt, you don't see him again. He went to practice yesterday. He had the brace on his knee. He did his media afterwards and didn't have a brace on his knee. And in his media afterwards, he said, look, I'm going to do everything I can to play. So nobody, I don't think he knows, Matt. I don't think Doug Peterson knows. I don't think the team doctor knows. But I can't imagine he wouldn't try and give it a go. I, you don't get the vibe that they're getting C.J. Beathard ready to play. C.J. took all the reps in practice, or most of them yesterday, in case he has to play. But I, And nobody knows definitively, but I would be surprised if he doesn't give it a go. I really would. I, I think my guess is you're going to see Trevor start the game, maybe with a braced up left knee, and then see where it goes. Frank uh, Frank Frangie is our guest, 1010XL in Jacksonville, and uh, the radio voice of the Jacksonville Jaguars will be in the Dome on Thursday night for, uh, for the start of Week 7. Does um, it's always interesting for me the, the the short week, especially the team that has to travel. It's just it's it's disadvantageous. There's no other way to say it. But when I look at, at the injury report, aside from Trevor Lawrence, anything else of note for Thursday night, Frank? That that we should be paying attention to? Yeah, a few things. By the way, that that, that road game, that short week road game, is a thing. History tells us teams don't play as well as that setting. So that's that, that's a thing, and that's not a mirage, Matt. You know this. We, yeah. History tells us that. So yeah, it is a tough thing. As from an injury standpoint, other than Trevor, they're not going to have Walker Little, who I think is their best offensive lineman. He played left tackle while Cam Robinson was suspended for four games, moved inside the left guard. He's a pretty good player. They're not going to have him. They're not going to have Zay Jones, who's a pretty good receiver. He's probably their third receiver now. He's not as good as Ridley and Christian Kirk. They've got pretty good weapons here. They're not going to have him. The most significant guy that they haven't ruled out, but I don't think it's going to play, is Tyson Campbell. That's the that, Matt, that's the significant one. I think he's one of the 10 best cornerbacks in the league. He's a former Georgia player. Aren't all the Georgia players great, by the way? I figured that out. If you play the Georgia, you're great. You're going to be great. It works but out. A, yeah, he's a really good player. And without him, I mean, I think Michael Thomas and Chris Olave are really good players. They're totally different. You know better than I do. But Thomas is a veteran, big physical guy. Olave's fast. And now, now you don't have your best cornerback to, to cover either one of those guys. So nobody can travel. You're probably going to play some zone and keep all eyes on the quarterback. So it changes your team a little bit. So Tyson Campbell being out, 
assuming Trevor's going to try and play, and my guess is he is, Tyson Campbell being out is the big one for the Jags. Uh, let's stay on the defensive side of the ball because the Saints, look, I mean, Frank, the Saints offense has just been, it, it's they've been on the struggle bus this year, man. They, they can't yeah. score. I mean, D Derek Carr is pacing to throw for like 14 touchdowns this year, which it, it almost feels like a like a joke when you say it out loud, but you know, right now they're um, either averaging about eighteen points a game. It just it's it's not good. So, what in that in the Saints' offensive line is a mess? Let's talk a little bit about that Jacksonville defensive front seven and how that matchup might go against the Saints' offensive line that might be down a couple of starters. I think it's played really well, and I think that's been one of the surprises of the team. Matt Josh Allen's having a terrific year. It's a contract year for him. He has not been great the last few years. He's already has seven sacks. He should have eight. He got a roughing the passer in London against Josh Allen, the other Josh right. Allen, which is a ridiculous call, by the way. So, so he should have eight sacks. He's got seven. He's played pretty well. The front is physical. Trayvon Walker, the first overall pick from Georgia a year ago, is a tough-nosed physical player. He's not a great pass rusher. So what they haven't had until Josh Allen started playing well this year is a very good exterior pass rush. Caleb Von Chason, you know him well. Mm -hmm. uh, good football player, but has not been a good pass rusher. Trayvon Walker is a tough-nosed guy. But for a guy picked first overall, he's not yet been a great pass rusher. So they haven't had a great exterior pass rush. Where they have been is very good against the run, very physical at the point of impact, and playing better as a group than I think anybody thought. I think the Jaguar defense is kind of the, the surprise of this team. We knew the offense was going to be pretty good, and we think it will be. I think the defense, Matt, particularly the part you're talking about, that front seven, has been a tough-nosed physical group and probably playing better than I thought they would. They really are. Mm. Might be, might be trouble for the Saints, who's ever to really struggle on the offensive line. Defensively, the Saints have been really good. They've been really good under Dennis Allen. If 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 Trevor Lawrence is it plays, but let's assume maybe not completely mobile, not not a hundred percent on on a little bit of a bum wheel. Uh, how does that matchup work? What's the key matchup there, Frank, for for Jacksonville's offense against that Saints defense? I think the Saints are really good on defense. I, I think I think like you said, they're three and three because. The offense hasn't been as good as they want, and they got to figure some things out. And Derek Carr's got to figure some things out with Pete Carmichael again. You know that world better than I do. But I think the defense is legit. I think there's a toughness. I think Dennis Allen's a tough. He's a defensive-minded guy. Is a head coach. I think. I think it's a good defense. So I think the Jags have their hands full with that with that defense. Number one, protect Trevor because number one, he's not going to be as mobile as he was. Even if he plays, you can't imagine that he, Trevor's a pretty mobile quarterback. You can't imagine he's going to be as mobile as he typically is. So you got to protect him. I think they've got to run it some. Travis Etienne's a really good back. Uh, he's, he's probably playing too much. Uh, they drafted Tank Bigsby out of Auburn, so Travis wouldn't get as many carries, Matt, and he's getting too many, I said, in my mm -hmm. opinion. But I think they got to run it a little bit. I, I don't think against that Saints defense in that building on this short week with a quarterback with a sore knee, assuming he plays, I don't think he can try and turn this into a track meet. I, I don't think that the Saints will allow that. So I think they got to run it, and I think they got to try and protect and, and I think I think both it's weird. You know, something an offensive team wants the, wants a thirty five twenty eight game, right? right? And a defensive team wants a seventeen thirteen game. I think both of these teams expect this game in the teens. I, I if it's more if, if the winning team has more than twenty three or twenty four points in this game, I'd be very surprised. So I think the Jags know how good the Saints are defensively. They're tough. They're physical. And I think the Jags have to be ready for that. Well, the Saints might be very familiar with playing a game in the teens because that's basically all they've done, Frank, because <laughs> they can't score. The total in the game, by the way, is 40, so, and the line is one. So you're looking at a game right there in the teens, maybe the right. low 20s. Uh, two more for you. Uh, if it comes down to a kick, uh, how about uh, at McManus? How's... Um, uh, how's how confident? I mean, look, it's been a big issue with the Saints with Blake Rupi, you know, with the yeah. rookie kicker. But uh, rookie kicker, if it comes down to a kick, how how are the Jags feeling about McManus right now? He's really good. He's really good. Remember, they had Riley Patterson last year, who wasn't bad. He's now the Lions kicker. Brought him in last year, made the big kick to beat the, the Chargers. You'll remember that and the big comeback. Mm -hmm. They thought they had a pretty good kicker, but then McManus became available, and they said, "Listen, sorry, Riley, we we have one of the better kickers in the league. He's twelve out of fourteen on the season. He made three last week." 48, 49, and 51, and I'm telling you, Matt, they were right down the middle. So there's a confidence level, and you even, and you know this, you play, you call plays different when you're confident in your kicker. So if it's that kind of game that we both expect, um, no, I think they're very calm. They, they have a really good special team here. I mean, I, I will tell you this. I've done this 10 years. I'll follow the team and cover the team forever. It's my 10th year calling the games. I would say Logan Cook, the punter, now with McManus here, with Jamal Agnew, the return guy, in my years of calling the games for sure, and, and honestly, Matt, maybe the whole time, the 29 years they've had a franchise, this is about as good as the special teams have been. This mm -hmm. is a good group. Okay? So, so I think, to your question, 
I would say very confident uh, if it comes down to that. I really would. What is uh, you mentioned? We'll probably see a game in the teens, but what is the the blueprint for Doug Peterson to get in and get out uh, Thursday night football? Get out of the dome with a win. Protect the quarterback because he's probably going to play hurt a little bit. Take care of the ball. I, I think again. I, I think they really. I can just tell you, being around them, they have a lot of respect for the Saints defense. Um, they're a takeaway team. The Jags lead the the NFL in takeaways. That's one thing that Bob Sutton is kind of the senior advisor here. Mike Caldwell is a coordinator, but Bob Sutton's one of those guys. You know, every team's got that senior advisor that's been around the league 100 years, right? And, and he's a takeaway guy, and they are really good. I mean, one cornerback, Darius Williams, has three interceptions. Andre Sisco, remember that name, by the way. He's going to be, he's going to be a Pro Bowl safety. He's really good. Mm. He's got three interceptions. So I think maybe win the turnover battle. That sounds cliche, but I think in this game, you've got to try and do that. I think protect your quarterback. I think don't do anything dumb and, and try and get out of there with a with a 23 to 16 win. I, I think that's the blueprint for this week in that stadium against that team. I think that's the blueprint. I think if I was Doug Peterson, that's certainly what I would be thinking. He is Frank Frangie, 1010 XL in Jacksonville, and the radio voice of the Jaguars. You can get him on Twitter at Frank underscore Frangie. Give him a follow. Frank, it's always a pleasure, man. We appreciate a couple a uh, couple of minutes. Thanks for the time. Matt, anytime. I'm gonna have some of that A2A and all that good stuff when I get over there. So. Thanks for having me on, brother. I appreciate it. Way better than fish and chips? Way better. I promise you, way better. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.